Hey there, tech friends. Brian here with Blackburn in Tech. Here is the top 10 networking commands that every tech should know, even the basic commands to kind of help you troubleshoot your way through the networking journey. Oh, it's Blackburn in Tech. We're leveling up from networking paths to systems we trust. Let's break it down. Let's build it back together. We're learning right on track. All right, let's start with the classic ping. This command sends a small amount of packets to a device to see if it's even reachable. Like if you ping 8.8.8.8, you'll get, typically get a response. That's the DNS server for Google. But also, it will also let you test a DNS as well. It's a basic test. So if I ping google.com, it should translate back to something. And that way, you'll at least know DNS is working for translating it back to you. All right, in this example, let's go ahead and ping Google. Ping G. So we can see that it translated and it gives me back a public IP address. So this is how we can verify that that works. But it also works for if we want to know an IP address already, such as 8.8.8.8. .8 we can see that it responds back, but I can also ping something that probably doesn't exist and it will tell me that it's not available. All right, the second one will be traceroute or trace RT if you're on a Windows box. What this command does is it shows you the path that it uses in order to communicate. So like if you're reaching out to a particular IP address, you can look at it and see on which route is it taking. Definitely comes in handy for network troubleshooting. I'll give a screenshot to kind of show what I'm talking about, but it'll kind of go through and describe which ones and where the traffic actually goes and how many hops it has to go to to get to the other. Okay, so the next would be IP config, or if you're on a Mac or Linux box, IF config or IP ADDR is the newer way of doing it. And what this does is this shows you your IP address of your current device. For example, let me pull up my command prompt on mine, IP. If I do this, I can see that I'm on the lab for fun network. Here's my internal IP address, and here is my default gateway. It gives me good, a lot of good information on here. And if you add the particular for like Windows, you do slash all. It gives you a lot more information about it, such as who's your DNS servers, um, how long is your lease valid if you're on DHCP. It gives you a lot of other good information as far as your networking. Netstat is also a really valued command that we use quite often. It's a way to see what connections are established on the computer, and this works across most platforms. And you can also see what ports you have open and what's listening in. For example, let me open up my command prompt and I'll show you. So if I do a Netstat, um, I don't currently have anything open on the computer, so I, there's no active connections going in and out. But if I went and, uh, went to a website, or something's going, you can see that the active connections are being established. But I can also do net on Windows, I can also do netstat-a. And this shows me what ports I have open on my computer currently. And this is a way to find out if a port or protocol is working as well. Netstat is a common tool that we use for troubleshooting DNS. It lets us know what IP addresses come back and what information. We can also point it to other DNS servers to see if our information matches what somebody else has. For example, if I go ahead and do an NS lookup, we'll just do for google.com. And I want to look on 8.8.8, .8, which is the Google's DNS. I can just add this into the suffix of this command right up here. I can just go look do NS lookup google.com and then the domain server I want to test. And this is what it gives back. But if I change this to another DNS server, It might give me a totally different IP address, but it could also give me the same. As you can see, this one gives me a separate IP address, so it's a way to troubleshoot more on the DNS server side. All right, so ARP is definitely a really valid command. So if I want to see what MAC addresses my computer knows about or wants to reach out to, it's a way for me to see who it's communicated with as well. Um, from a router or switch perspective, this is what is known as like a layer two communication. So it's how it knows who has what MAC address. Okay, so let me open up a command prompt and I'll do ARP space dash A. And this will show me all the MAC addresses that my computer currently knows about, whether it's the multicast address, my broadcast address, any other devices that it's talked to on the network. It will let me kind of see who's if, who it's talked to and if it knows what MAC address goes where. The next one will be the route command. This is a way you can check to see when you're sending traffic out from your computer, where does it actually send it? What is the path that it uses? Now, if you're on Linux, you can use route-in, but on Windows, it's route print. So let me open up a command prompt. Route P. So we can see right here is the routing table for this computer. Right here, when it has all zeros like this, this is your default gateway. So anything it doesn't know, 
it will send it out to your default gateway. This one's typically learned through your DHCP server, or you could have it set statically. SSH is a really common protocol used for secure remote access. It's a way to access a shell or a remote session of another device, such as a router or a switch, or even another computer through like a, a command line interface. This can come in handy, especially when troubleshooting and accessing other network devices. For example, if I pull over PuTTY and I we go ahead and SSH to 192.168.40.12, which is a server that I have on this network. If I click open, it will take us to a login page, and this is how we can remote into the server and access the different resources on that server. So once I log in on the server, even though I am on my computer, this terminal session is actually connected to a remote server elsewhere on the network. And I can exit and release the connection back. DIG is another DNS command tool. Unlike NSLOOKUP, DIG gives you detailed information. So typing DIG example.com will get you information on the domain and more of its records. So let me pull up a connection and show you. So if I do dig and the help command right here, well, let's see it. But if I do dig, it will give us a response back. And we can also look for particular type of records and everything else using dig. They're definitely a very powerful tool. Last but not least is Telnet. This command is also used for testing connectivity to a specific port. For example, if you're checking a server, you can check on, see if port 80 is open, see if just a HTTP website's open, or an SSH connection if you wanna see if the, someone has SSH turned on. It's one way you can use it. Let me give you an example. Let me pull up my computer. So over here on the computer, if I go to Telnet to 192.168.40.2, and I know that this server supports SSH on it, so that, port by default is 22. So if I hit this, I can see that it's trying to connect in to the server using SSH 2.0 using open SSH and get a good little bit of information about what type of server it is. You can use this for multiple testing projects and getting a little bit more information and seeing what ports are open on or through different firewalls. And there you have it. There's the top 10 networking commands that every tech should know. And it's a good way to get a good rounding of 90% of your initial troubleshooting. We'll use one, if not multiple of these tools. If you found this information helpful, go ahead and click that like button. If you didn't, go ahead and click the thumbs down, put a comment in or for more video ideas. Or if you think that we should change the content, let's make this more of a community discussion. If you did like it, go ahead and click that like and subscribe. Greatly help it and it helped the channel.